Hey guys, I've got the Jackson TV G2 working pretty well and I've buttoned it back up and I thought I'd record one last video on it showing it in actual operation. I've got it hooked up to the same homemade 10 MHz shortwave receiver that I showed in my video on the WaveTech 1080 and I thought it'd be interesting to compare how this works compared to the modern 1080. Here's my RF output going to the input um, of this antenna coil and my demodulator probe is attached to the tuned secondary side of that antenna transformer. I've got my sweep set around about 14 megahertz with a 3 megahertz width so it's going from about 11 megahertz to 17 megahertz and here's what it looks like. So I've got a nice response curve and I can dial in my marker as well. It's a blip up at the top there. So I'm going to trace down a little. Now the one thing I noticed right away is that the markers are a lot less distinct on this. Plus you only get the one variable marker unless you add an, uh, a secondary external marker or plenty of crystal in here. A crystal like this. However, I don't have a crystal that's appropriate for this frequency, so I'll uh, just leave it out. If you recall, the WaveTech could put a marker at intervals of 1, 10, and 100 megahertz with different amplitudes, so you can really see accurately what's going on. Another thing that's kind of uh, different about this is the switch here, blinking in double pattern. I think it's easier to see what the difference is if I show the horizontal and vertical signal separately. So this top signal is actually the sweep voltage that goes to the, uh, to the sweep oscillator, which is derived from the 60 hertz AC line, whereas the WaveTech used a triangle wave so this is actually non-linear, which is why it's important to run your scope's x-axis off of this signal. Now, where that blanking or double pattern comes into play is here. So, imagine as the sine wave is going from the low point to the high point, it's sweeping from the lowest frequency to the highest frequency. And then it sweeps from the highest frequency back down to the lowest frequency. Well, on the blanking mode, they only output RF on the upward side of the sine wave. On the downward slope, they blank the output. That's why he's got this flat line here. That's why they call it blanking. If I switch to double pattern, now I get RF output on both the upswing and the downswing. If I put this back into XY mode, you'll see that we now have two superimposed response curves. One is the upward, one is the sweep going from low to high frequency, the other is going from high back to low frequency. To get them to coincide, they have this phasing control here. And if you rotate that, you can get them to sync up pretty well. I believe the reason they do this is so that you can see how your circuit responds as frequencies sweep from low to high versus high to low because it might be different. But I, I've noticed that something distinct to all these old sweep generators and the uh, Hickok 615 has it as well. Whereas newer sweep generators do not. They use a linear sweep. But otherwise they do the same thing. You can certainly get your response curve and you can select your peaking frequency on the marker oscillator and then tune your circuit so you get a peak wherever your uh, blip is. So you know you don't have to spend money on a fancy uh, modern sweep generator. If you get your hands on an old one just make sure you recap it, calibrate it and you should be good to go. Alright that is it for my little series on the TVG2. I hope you enjoyed it.